Trust your first impression. What do you see? I don't, I don't see. I see the eye. You see the eye. Mm -hmm. The eyes. Tell me about this eye. Describe it for me. There's two of them, two eyes. Mm -hmm. And the right eye has like, um, mm, I can't see the right eye very good. There is a lightning bolt going through it, but almost like it's got its eye closed. Mm -hmm. It's kind of different. I've never seen it look like that. Tell me how big these eyes are. They seem like they're like the same size of my eyes. Mm -hmm. Kind of like people's eyes, but I don't think they're I don't think, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I want you to connect with these eyes telepathically. As you look in these eyes, I want you to trust the impression that you get from them. Do you feel that this is male or female energy? Male comes to mind. Male, very good. Ask this male energy if we can connect with it today. I'm getting no. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why you're getting a no. Let's find out why. It comes to me because it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to. Okay. Well, it's been watching you for a long time. It's laughing, kind mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask my team <coughs> of angels to come around you and surround these eyes so we can illuminate them. Close in on these eyes. I'm going to ask <coughs> Archangel Michael to use the sword as his prompting to be able to talk to these eyes. Tell me what we're getting from these eyes now. What are they telling you as the angels are surrounding these eyes. I feel like there's a real struggle in mm -hmm. that this I want to call entity is not going to talk. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to find out why it's there. We want to be able to help this entity because it's been watching you for a long time. So I'd like the angels to clamp down on this entity, this being, send them that light of yours, and let's see if those eyes change. What are you getting from it? Kind of staying the same. Mm -hmm. What are you getting from it? <coughs> What's coming to mind is anger. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why it's angry. I'd like the angels to squeeze them a little bit more. Because it hates people. Oh, it hates people. Okay. Well, usually when it hates people, it's because it's been something has happened to this entity. Mm hmm. Because if you hate somebody, it's usually a mirror to yourself. So we want to find out why he's so angry. Ask him why he's angry. Why he hates people. He, he says because he wants to be. He wants to be. He wants to be mad. He wants to be mad. Okay. Well, being mad is not very good energy. It doesn't feel good, does it? No. Mm -hmm. So I want the entity <coughs> to look inside of itself. I want it to find that white light that's inside of itself. That white light 
where the creation came from. Each being has a white light inside of them. Tell it to look inside of this white light. And let's see what it gets from it. He says that uh, it's not very big. No, of course not. He has to make the light a lot bigger. Ask him to make that light a lot bigger so that he can feel it. It's like a flame. You have to actually work at the light to make it bigger. Tell him to make this light much bigger so he could feel it. And I want the angels to shed light on him so that he can see this light. It's like he's so resistant. Mm-hmm. Because he's not working on his light. Tell him to work on the light. I keep telling him, but he just keeps saying, I don't want to. Mm, that's because he must be very hurt. Mm -hmm. Ask him why he's so hurt. Why is he so angry? Someone must have hurt him. He was beaten. He was beaten. Mm -hmm. Let's find out who beat him. His dad. His dad, of course. That's why he's hurt. Someone that he loved beat him. All the time. Uh-huh. So ask him what his name was when he had a body, when he was a child and was beaten by his dad. That immediately came to me as George. Mm -hmm. So George has gone through a very, very hard time as a child. <coughs> yes. He was betrayed by the man who he needed to look up to. That's why he's so angry. Yes, his grandfather too. Mm -hmm. So all of them have been feeling betrayed mm -hmm. from the men in their life that they should have loved so much. Mm -hmm. Can George forgive his dad, not knowing any better because his dad didn't know how to be a dad? That's all he knew. He was beaten too, and he thought that was the right way of doing things instead of with love. Now can he understand that his dad didn't know how to raise him? He just... He kind of says... He doesn't want to forgive him, but mm -hmm. he kind of understands. Mm -hmm. But if you don't forgive somebody else, it's the person who is not forgiving that is being in pain, is staying in pain. Can he understand that? Yes. He needs to forgive himself for allowing all of these beatings to have affected him. If he would have understood that his dad didn't know anybody any better, he could have handled it better. And you know, I just heard before we started this session about Sherry and her dad. Mm. And Sherry was telling me that she and her dad didn't get along really well either. But Sherry kind of just ignored him and brushed him off. And she lived very happy understanding that that's just the way her dad was. Mm -hmm. Can you understand, George, how it was really up to you to stay happy instead of accepting these beatings as a way to keep angry? Can you accept that? I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to feel that light within you. Can you see that light growing now that you have more comprehension? Yes. Feel that light grow. I want you to grow that light to the rest of your body. From your head to your toe. Allow that light to take over. That is the light of the universe, the divine light. And all it is is love. Can you feel that love all over you now? Allow it to go into yes. every bit of your essence. How does that feel now? It feels tingly. Mm -hmm. When you're in a state of love, it's impossible to be angry. Do you realize that? I understand. So take a breath in and feel that love. Feel that love from the divine. 
knowing that when you go to the light, <coughs> you're going to be home, real home. And you'll understand why you had to go through what you did. Are you ready to release now and let go of this woman and go back home? Can you be, can you find the courage to do that? I, I guess I'm a little afraid. <clears throat> what are you afraid of? Why is it that you chose Jerry? Did you know her in a different life? No. How did you find her? She found me. Mm. How did she find you? In meditation? No. Mm -hmm. Since she was little. Mm -hmm. How old was she when she found you? Nine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was she doing at nine years old that she found you? She was playing. Mm -hmm. Did she ask for a playmate? No. Mm -hmm. so then how did you attach to her? Because I liked her and I just wanted to. Mm -hmm. Just be with her? I kind of wanted to control her. Mm -hmm. Like you have been controlled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because a bully is always bullied. Did you find it hard to control her? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. She's strong-minded. She is. She is. Maybe she was teaching you something. She tries. She still tries. Mm -hmm. But we now know, George, that your life is not evolving being in this woman. How, old, how old are you when you lost your life? Nineteen. Mm -hmm. That's very young. How did you die? Drowned. Mm -hmm. Was it by accident? Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened after you drowned? Where'd you go? I stayed in the water for a while. Mm -hmm. I was just confused. Mm -hmm. I went home with Sherry's dad. Mm -hmm. What was he doing at the time? He was fishing. I see. How did you attach to him? I just followed him. Mm -hmm. You followed him and then you found her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was the deal with the eyes? Why did you show up as eyes all the time? Because I'm watching her. Ah. I want her to know that I'm here. She's told me to go away and I told her she can't get rid of me. No, of course not. Because you were in so much pain. <coughs> it was it was not right for you to have to lose your life so early, was it, George? It wasn't fair. No, and that's why you were angry. So now, George, knowing that you have now a new life in front of you by going to the light, can you forgive yourself for doing this? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put my hand on your chest, George, and I want you to give me all of that pain that you've been feeling all this time. This pain that turned into anger against people. Give me all of that pain. I'm going to send it to the universe for healing. You don't need to carry any of this weight anymore. Give me all that pain and anger. Take it out of every bit of you and tell me when I have it all. Good. So. I'm taking it and sending it out to the universe. Now, George, <coughs> I know you're going to be traveling very light as you go to the light. What would you like to put in that place instead? Joy. Let's put lots of joy in there. Feel that joy coming in. Feel it filling every bit of you, and I'm going to tap your forehead and seal it in. Seal that in. What else would you like to put in there? Love. Lots of love. Let's put all of that love in. Feel it, feel it coming in like a fire hose of love. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And let me seal that in. What else? 
Understanding. Mm -hmm. Understanding. All of those things they did to you. You're going to be going to school now, George, and they can give you classes on that. It's going to be wonderful. What else? Peace. Mm -hmm. Feel that peace. Feel it going inside of you. Are you complete now? Mm-hmm. I found the ass much better. Mm-hmm. Would you like Sherry to forgive you for all of this that you've done to her? Yes. Mm-hmm. Let me talk to Sherry. Sherry, what would you like to tell George? Yeah, I'm ready for him to go. Mm-hmm. We're going to send him with love, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. Let me talk to George. George, where is it that you've been in, attached to her? Kind of around her throat, mm -hmm. her lungs. Mm -hmm. Have you ca caused any symptoms? Mm -hmm. What kind of symptoms? She had thyroid disease. Mm -hmm. Was that you that caused that? Probably. Mm -hmm. What else did you cause? I caused her to be unhappy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Anything else? I call her names. Mm -hmm. Not very nice names? No. No, that's not very nice, George. What would you like to call her now? She's very lovely and beautiful and sweet and... Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I want you to take all of that influence that you have in her body and pull it out. And Sherry, I want you to tell me what it looks like inside. What is all that attachment? Look like. It looks um. It's kind of like gunky, mm -hmm. pukey, yellow, orange, rusty. Mm hmm. Okay. I want you to go inside your body and use a tool to get rid of all this. What would you like to use? You can either use a fire hose. You can use a vacuum. What would you like to use? Comes to mind the shovel. It's like shovel. shoveling all right. crap. So let's shovel all of that. You may want to put it on a little conveyor belt, send it right to the angels. Shovel all of that stuff out of there. Don't leave any part in. And George, I want you to start releasing it so that it makes it very, very quick for her to do that. Release all of your connection to her. Tell me when you're done. We're done. Wonderful. So I'd like for you to give all of that to Archangel Michael so he can take it. And are you ready to leave now, George? Yes. Very good. I want the angels of light to surround you. And I want you to go right up through here through the crown of her head and have Archangel Michael take you right <coughs> to the light. Take you right to the light and tell me when you get there, George. I'm there. What do you see? Who greets you? My father. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about how he greets you? I'm glad to see him. He's smiling and mm -hmm. it's like my life with him is not the same. Mm-hmm. Like that horrible story doesn't exist anymore. Wonderful. So go ahead and embrace your dad. May the light of the universe always accompany you, George. Thank you very much for releasing and letting go and going into the light. And I'd like Archangel Raphael to come and seal that area where George was inhabiting. Use your light. Seal her. And let me speak with the higher self. Do I have permission to speak with the higher self today? Yes. Thank you. I know you could have shown Sherry past lives today. Why did you show her the eyes? She's been really wondering about them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were George all along. They're still there, but that was George. Mm -hmm. He tried to take the eyes. Ah. The eyes were not George. Who's the eyes belong to? Her higher self. Ah. Okay, so that's you? Yes. Okay, so what is the significance of these eyes with the thunderbolt in it? 
Today it was lying down. More recently, it changed. What was the significance of that? Previous life. Mm-hmm. Struck by lightning. Mm-hmm. Is that why she's terrified? Yes. <clears throat> Can you tell her a little bit of that, that love, or does she need to see it? I think she needs to see it. Okay. So I'd like for you to take her back. Take her back to the life <coughs> now. I'm going to count from five to one, and when we get to number one, you're going to be at that life. Five, going back, four, three, two, and one. Be there now. Is it daytime or nighttime there? It's daytime. Daytime. Look around you. What do you see? I'm in a field, and there's um, hay, hay bells. Mm -hmm. Hay bales. Mm -hmm. And we're working. We're loading hay. Or we have been taking, um, been chopping grass to to put in hay bales. Mm -hmm. Look at your body and tell me what you look like. I'm a um, young man, mm -hmm. dressed in old-fashioned type clothes. Um, I have kind of leather shoes, almost kind of like cow skin type. Mm -hmm. I have suspenders on. I do have a hat on too. Mm -hmm. What does your face look like? White, fair skinned, kind of a little bit of freckles. Mm -hmm. Young. How old do you feel there? Maybe 18. Mm -hmm. What do they call you there? Listen for your name. Jeff. Mm -hmm. Jeff, where is it that you live? Washington. Mm -hmm. And what is it that you're doing there, Jeff? Farming. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Getting um, ready for winter. Who's helping you? My dad. Mm -hmm. My brother, little brother, teenage brother. Well, let's see what happens as you're loading this, this hay. A dark storm comes, it's coming, I see the storm coming. Mm -hmm. What are you feeling? My dad's telling us to hurry. <clears throat> we need to wrap up before it starts raining. Mm -hmm. I know, I already know it's coming. It's so that's why I'm afraid of lightning, because I was mm -hmm. struck by lightning there. I All right. I want you to go through it. I want you to see it as an observer. Tell me what happens next. My dad comes running up, and I'm on the ground. I'm kind of like vibrating. Mm -hmm. um, it all happens so fast. Okay. So right now, I'm going to put my hand on your chest, mm. Jeff. I'm going to put my hand on your chest. And I want you to feel that peace. Feel the peace. Allow yourself to just feel all of that peace. And now that you're feeling that peace, I want you to observe what it is that you're thinking about as you're lying there, now that you feel at peace. What are the things going through your head? I think I'm dying. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to die yet. 
My dad is really sad. He's crying and he's really, he needs me. Mm -hmm. He needs my help because we have so many animals to take care of and. Mm -hmm. Very good. So Jeff, I want you now that you're feeling at peace, take your last breath. And I want to see what happens to your soul. Where do you go? What happens? All right, right to heaven. Okay, so let's find out as you go to heaven. I want you to meet you with your guides. And let's review this life that you just had to see what was the purpose and the mission of it. What was the purpose of living this short life? To be happy. Mm-hmm. Were you happy? I was happy. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Did you learn any lessons while you were there? Not really. I, um... I don't really think that, um... You were just happy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's find out from your guides what the purpose is of leaving in such a drastic way. <clears throat> Go ahead and meet with your counsel and tell me when you get there. Um, I'm there. Mm -hmm. Tell me who you see there. It's like I know them, but I don't know them. Mm -hmm. Just allow yourself <clears throat> to be in that moment. See, I really... How many are there? Six. Mm-hmm. What do they look like? The first one I've focused on, I can't get past him, Arlie. Mm-hmm. He's, like, really wide. He's mm -hmm. got a he's very big, kind of, a big man. Mm-hmm. He's kind of got rolls, and he's got a big smile, and, mm -hmm. um, kind of like, <clears throat> comes to my mind as Divine Director. Mm -hmm. Some kind of director, Divine Director. Connect with him telepathically, and let's find out why you had to live that life and die in that, in that way. He's kind of laughing and he's saying to me, you have to make light of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's funny as a lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. so make light of it. Like, that's the one way to give me the light, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's telling me. It's like, you have to bring the light. Mm -hmm. So when you hear light uh, thunder and you see lightning <clears throat> what would you like Jeff to think about in the future that is just the light mm -hmm. just making a lot of noise and um it's funny as mm -hmm. that we want to go to the light but then we're afraid of the light why so soon why did Jeff have to leave so soon It was because of his father. It was um, a journey. wasn't so much for Jeff. It was his father had to have the loss. Mm -hmm. it was Jeff, Jeff didn't really need... He didn't learn much that life. He was more of just be happy, go with the flow. And it was... He knew his whole contract was it would be short life. Mm -hmm. Was the father <clears throat> in Jeff's life also in the life of Sherry? No. No. Okay. So what is the mission now after Jeff has left? What influences does he have in Sherry's life? He's that part of her that's calm mm -hmm. and stays centered. Mm-hmm. It's a very part centered part of her. Mm -hmm. But the lightning 
that still sticks with him because it all happened, you know, like, you're in contract. You have your, your mission, what you were set to do with another soul. You know that you're going in and you're coming out and everybody goes in, everybody goes out. Sometimes when we leave, it's startling. Mm -hmm. And there's still that part. I was startled mm -hmm. by the exit. Can we remove that <clears throat> memory from Sherry? We don't need to have her connected to that, do we? No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect her life. No. Mm -hmm. So can we disconnect it today where mm. she knows that that was Jeff's life and there's no danger when she hears thunder and lightning? Yes. Because mm -hmm. it's been paralyzing her for a long time. Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <coughs> would you be willing to answer the questions that Sherry brought or do we con continue with her higher self? The higher self. All right, good. So I'd like you to close that scene now. Leave that man to continue on his journey. He will find peace now. He understands that the lightning was just a way for him to exit, and it was just a light. All right. So let me continue with the higher self. Thank you very much for allowing her to see that. Do you think that's going to help her? Absolutely. Okay. She doesn't have to cower in the middle of her <coughs> no, house she can. anymore. She needs to be like Tesla. She needs to look at the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. Enjoy it. She was just reading about that a while back and how Tesla loved lightning, and mm -hmm. she was desiring that she could love lightning, too. Okay, so we've removed that from her. <clears throat> now we understand what that, where the elk came from. Why is Sherry so exhausted all the time? What's going on with her? Let's block. She needs to walk. Block. Oh, it's she's, a block. She's blocked. What's blocking her? Would you take a look and see? Tell me if there's any shadows there blocking her. There are shadows. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of shadows. It's con I guess it's concerning what you think a lot is. <laughs> Can we get the angels to shed some light on these shadows and yes. tell me where they are? Where is where, where's one of them? One's to the right. Mm -hmm. To the right of her body? Yes. All right, let's bring that, that energy up. Up, 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 up. Good morning. Are you male or female energy? Female. Female. How long have you been there with Sherry? Lifetimes. Lifetimes. You've been following her? Yes. From lifetime. Who was she? Lucy, Susan. <laughs> she was always a female? Yes. All right. So what is your name? Lucy. Lucy. So Lucy, why have you been following her? Were you a friend? I was. Mm -hmm. And what happened? I died. Mm. How did you die, Lucy? I fell. Mm -hmm. Hit my head. How old were you? I was little. Little girl? Very little, mm -hmm. like four, three, mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. So, Lucy, what happened after you hit your head? and died. I hung out with my sister. Mm -hmm. Was Sherry your sister in that life? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was her name at the time? Karen. Karen. So you hung out with Karen. Did she help you? Did she protect you? She seen me. Mm -hmm. And what happened after Karen died? I just kept waiting because I knew she'd be back. Mm -hmm. How many lifetimes have you been with her? Three. Three. 
Are you getting any satisfaction, Lucy? No one seems to know you're there. Um, it's boring. I know it is. No one's there to play with you, to talk with you? She don't see me no more. Mm -hmm. Did she ever see you when she was little? Not really. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Where did you attach to her? Kind of like on... Mm -hmm. Her right side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you caused her any any uh, symptoms where she feels you? Probably. Mm -hmm. Tell me an example. I don't know. Sometimes I like maybe cause her to have back aches and mm -hmm. um, maybe occasional headache. Mm -hmm. Are you the one causing the migraines or is it somebody else? Somebody else. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I do. Mm. Do you do it for fun? I don't know. I just get bored. Mm hmm. Well, Lucy, did you know that all, all entities, when they lose their body, should go to the light, should go back home? That's where we came from. Sherry's been studying that a lot. Mm-hmm. You're not convinced? Well, I just thought I could go with her when she goes. That's going to take a long time. Don't you miss anybody else besides your sister? Yeah, I miss my mom. Mm -hmm. Would you like to go to your mom? I'd like to see my mom. Okay. So, Lucy, before you go, I want you to take from her body <coughs> all of the influence that you have. And, Sherry, you know how to do it. Go inside and see what it looks like from inside where she's connected to you. Jeez, that's all black and gray. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to use for that? Bright white light. All right, so let's start shedding some light all over that. And Lucy, I want you to pull out all of the cords and cables that connect you to her body. Pull it all out. Yank it out by the roots. Don't leave anything in. And would you like to tell anything to Sherry before you go? I'm going to miss her, and I love her, and I'm going to watch over her. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to do it on her physical body. No, and I, mm -hmm. I'm i sorry that I... Okay. Uh, so I'm going to have the angels accompany you. <clears throat> I'm going to have you go up through the crown of her head, and Archangel Michael, please deliver her directly to the light and tell me who you see there. My mom. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be with your mom again? I'm hugging her. Mm -hmm. Does she say anything to you, Lucy? She says it's about time. Mm -hmm. She's so happy I'm here. Very good. Give her a big hug. Mm -hmm. May the light of the universe accompany you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'd like now all of that gook that you <coughs> make sure that all of that is light within. And I'm going to ask Archangel Raphael to also seal you with that light. Make sure that every every space where Lucy was is full of light. And I'm going to use my hand to go through the rest of your body and see if you see any other shadows in your body. Tell me what you see. Where do you see any shadows? Shining the light. Something on my right knee. Mm -hmm. Because it's like jumping around. Let's bring it up. Let's bring up that energy that's been jumping around. Good afternoon. What do you have to tell me today? You've been jumping around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. It's ready to go. I'm, you're ready to go. Who are you? <laughs> let's find out who you are first. My name is Sam. Sam, how long have you been in that knee? Pretty new with Sherry. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? I died of old age. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you go to the light? I 
just felt like that, I would be judged. Mm. Well, the only one that judges is yourself, Sam. Like the others, I listen to Sherry, but mm -hmm. it's just I need help to be taken, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Pull all that influence from her knee, please. <coughs> Pull it out, all out. We don't need any of that there. Would you like to tell Sherry something before you go, Sam? <laughs> Would you like to tell her? Yes. Just telling her, thank you for the ride. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me have the, Ar the the angels surround you and have Archangel Michael lead you right up through her crown, up into the light, and tell me when you get there. Tell me how it feels. I'm there, and it mm -hmm. feels wonderful. Anybody there to meet you? There's so many people. There's like a thousand people. <laughs> you must have been a very nice person, Sam. I was. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Made a lot of the universe accompany you always. Thank you. Let me put my my light over <coughs> your body again. I'm going to scan your body and tell me where you see any shadows. Anything jumping around, trying to get your attention. Where do you feel it? And if your higher self can give me any hints, go right ahead. I feel like it's clear. Not... Very good. Her body clear? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what was causing those migraines. <laughs> what was the reason why she's having these migraines? It's coming to me as previous attack. Mm -hmm. Is this from this life? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does she still have that? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's in what? What's attacked her? I'm getting. What's coming to my mind is reptilian. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd like the Archangels to work on this one. I'd like them to surround this reptilian. <coughs> totally encapsulate him. And tell me what it is that's happening right now. Give me the scene as they work with this reptilian. I see all these beings surrounding this reptilian mm -hmm. looking it's almost like a human mm -hmm. body. But the reptilian's fighting. Mm -hmm. Fighting hard. Mm -hmm. It's like flinging his arms, trying to combat off these angelic beings. Mm -hmm. Tell me everything that happens. See them putting like a net over it. Mm hmm. What kind of net do you see? Kind of just like a fishing net. Mm hmm. Very good. And, but the net's, the net is light. Yes. <clears throat> it's not like um, fabric, it's like. Um, it's a light net. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yes, it's the white light net. Mm hmm. And tell me what happens next. That. Angelic beings are kind of looking at me because I see them in a distance mm -hmm. and um, I'm kind of just shaking their head back, kind of like reading their mind saying that they're going to contend with him. Mm -hmm. Are they waiting for you <clears throat> to tell them something? No, I don't think so. I think I think they're just saying for me to trust, mm -hmm. trust that, um, trust them, that I have to trust them because something about me attracts the reptilians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost 
um, it's almost like I'm a beacon. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, information Arcturians. I've given permission for the Arcturians to use me as kind of bait. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that the reptilians will tune in to me and then the Arcturians will track them. Mm -hmm. Because I've offered my help and that these entities are being removed. Mm -hmm. They have a negative influence on the humans. And they have to be removed. And they've been working on this for a while. But they have taken this entity, it's gone now. Mm -hmm. So how can we take any future reptilians away? How can Sherry protect herself in the future if she is offered herself as, as bait? She is protected. Mm -hmm. But? Sometimes there's discomfort. Mm -hmm. She's agreed to that. Mm -hmm. To knowing that it's not real discomfort. That just her humanness wants to to take it as discomfort. Okay. So in the future when she feels this discomfort as what a migraine? Will she feel it as a migraine? Yeah, she, yes. Mm -hmm. So when she has a migraine in the future, what should she be doing herself? Because she's not going to be coming to a session like this. Should she be calling the archangels to remove it? How can she do that herself? She has to... She has to allow the process. Mm -hmm. It is important what she's doing. She's helping in ways that she can't grasp in her human small mindedness. The bigger picture is so important. She knows that. Mm -hmm. Just uh, uh, one of the things she works on is the art of allowing. Yes. She needs to just keep on that focus to allow and not resist even though she tries to really hard not to resist changes are happening genetically dna with her and all others and Sherry's a big assistance in that. Mm -hmm. How does it feel when DNA is changed? Is it a physical symptom? Definitely can be a physical <clears throat> symptom. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the things that she does a lot with her massage mm -hmm. and her body work is she helps adjust people's symptoms mm -hmm. and she holds them perfectly accountable for their perfection. She does very well with that, but symptoms have to be removed from some souls because they get caught up in the symptom. Mm -hmm. And that can be distracting. And we have a lot of souls like Sherry that are working on helping people overcome the distraction. Mm -hmm. And every person goes through this differently and some have to suffer like Sherry did just to have the awakening. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tell me that they're feeling a lot of different symptoms in their body. Very very uncomfortable <clears throat> feelings, yes. vibrations, pains. Um, how long is this going to continue? For each person, it's going to be different, and 
every journey is so different and each person has to find people like Sherry and like and like yourself Alba that will assist them and to quit focusing on the pain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and realize that there is a greater opportunity mm -hmm. and what is that pain's opportunity Sherry's favorite saying now is what is the opportunity in that what is the opportunity in that mm -hmm. and I see her bringing that to her clients too right. and saying what is this opportunity what is this about mm -hmm. um, some people that she works on she knows she can't talk with them she has to do it all mentally mm -hmm. spiritually and other people she follows through and bringing that to them she had an amazing one happened this week very heavy over obese he was very obese mm -hmm. and she reminded him he was an angel an angel that was in great pain because this person must be in home so bad and this entity had never incarnated before it was his first incarnation mm -hmm. he volunteered and he was miserable and Sherry shined the light through me through him and it was a miracle mm -hmm. and those she sees and she sees she sees the result and for many light workers they see the result it's in front of them and it feels so good mm -hmm. but for most light workers you don't get to see the result you have to know that the result is there and not always are you going to get to you will know someday but to know that you're making that significant change and that the body has to go through this process everybody has to go through this process or you will not evolve mm -hmm. these vibrations <clears throat> that people feel I have massive vibrations in my throat and my chest um, other people have different things what is it doing what is this vibration all about it's about shifting your your whole energy the human body is going to be completely changed if you want to it's hard for me to put it in the words that most would understand the vibration of the human body is very slow it's very low and it has to shift to a higher vibration mm -hmm. and in that shifting as the oneness each one of us is carrying different threads if you might want to say of our purpose or mission however you want to put that your mission is through the voice and through your work is through the voice mm -hmm. through talking with others so therefore you help others so your vibration is almost like the thread of your throat goes to the thread of those that you work with mm -hmm. I see that's why the, the 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 vibration in the throat is so much mm-hmm mm -hmm. in the heart yes mm -hmm. it's that connection so when you get around somebody that is very grounded maybe too grounded mm -hmm. they help ground you mm -hmm. when you get around somebody who is maybe very highly vibration in their crown like they're like they're too airy mm -hmm. but those entities humans do need to ground themselves so that's why they come to somebody who's grounded I see so we kind of attract opposites to us a little bit and <clears throat> to help fulfill our lack hmm. so when you attract let's say a light worker 
uh, has attracted a family member that is not very highly evolved. Mm -hmm. Is that because of that, that you are attracting the opposite? Quite often, yes. Mm -hmm. Different, always different purposes, though. There's no, like, set rules. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, like, likes, you know, one of the sayings that people like attracts alike, mm -hmm. opposites attract opposite. It's, it, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. But every, is, everything is for its purpose. Yes. Hmm. So, when we meet somebody who robs us the wrong way, that gives us the opportunity to maybe look at what, you know, what does that person bring for us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you meet the person that almost gets you high just by being with them because it just, it just makes you vibrate like so high, makes you feel so good. That's, they're completing something for you as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of light workers that come to me, including Sherry, don't they, they want out of this life. They want to check out. They miss home. <clears throat> What's happening with them? What's the reason? They just miss the, the the love and Sherry misses the love and she's so she's excited about being here but she misses her real family her God family, her family of, that there is not this despair, there's so much despair. We try to show Sherry and we try to show those too. We give them glimpses, but the problem with giving Sherry too many glimpses, it makes her want to go home even mm -hmm. worse. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of held back from allowing her to have out-of-body experiences because she was that's all she wanted to do. Mm. She would try very hard, as a matter of fact, and then and, and she was told by a psychic mm -hmm. channeler at one point that she had to quit meditating, and it made her really mad. And it's not that we wanted her to quit meditating. She was obsessed with it. And that's all she did, and that was not her purpose. And now she meets others that are like her, mm -hmm. and she tells them, put your feet back on the ground. You have to ground yourself. Mm -hmm. And to all light workers out there, such a balance because we have to keep our feet grounded. It's very important that we stay grounded into Mother Earth. It's very important that we do our meditations and quieting their mind and putting our head into the air. But it's very important to stay centered with this human vehicle. It's that mind, body, and soul. The mind has to stay connected to the soul. The soul has to stay connected to the mind and, the, and all have to stay connected to the earth. And that is the trick mm -hmm. for being in this human existence, is finding that balance between the mind, the body, and the soul. And that is what Sherry attempts to do. And she does it very well. She does not give herself enough credit as pretty much every light worker out there doesn't give themselves enough credit. This spiritual center that she wants to do, <clears throat> is this something that she came here to do? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can you give her some tips on how she can find abundance doing this? Because all light workers like to do their stuff, but the money is not always uh, what follows them. Money is her lesson and many lessons, and... She knows, she knows, she knows she just has to trust. This is the trust issue. Mm -hmm. 
and trusting and she she yells at us a lot saying that she gets it and she does get it she's got it but the only time that the money thing comes up is when she falls out of trust ah uh, okay I think across the board and she's talked to many light workers she has quite the circle of light worker friends now and more coming to her now as it is time for um, the light workers are coming together we are bonding we're banding and we're building this beautiful team and it's that trust and staying in that space and keeping the mind clear and anytime doubt comes in is to fall back and know and trust that it is all happening exactly everything is working perfectly mm -hmm. well we were also talking about the fact that she's in the she's working in the Florida Keys doing this beautiful work <clears throat> and there's always talk about having Florida go underwater what would you like to say about that because there's a lot of fear out there about where should I be there is changes coming and Sherry is to do what she's doing she is doing exactly what she's supposed to be doing she will help people in the near future or move from the keys mm -hmm. I did not know that mm -hmm. so there will be people placed in the right places to assist people out of fear everybody's job is very important as we make this change to the new earth we will put post we will post different individuals in different spots that have volunteered Sherry has volunteered she's volunteered a long time ago she's going to assess those who need to leave the keys mm -hmm. she will be safe and everybody will be safe the people if they just would listen they will know where to go mm -hmm. they will have the people to guide them their souls will tell them everybody will know but the case is there's going to be chaos and Sherry and the many light workers that have volunteered are going to have their hands full but not to look at it in a bad way mm -hmm. it's just standing firm standing in the light and knowing that everything's working perfectly mm -hmm. are these uh, changes in the earth because of the earth or because of other forces both mm -hmm. I have both answers the earth itself is an entity mm -hmm. is energy people are energy animals are energy everything is energy and the energy is changing we're shifting we're evolving we're moving out of the dark ages we're moving into the light that is what we want mm -hmm. we are tired of killing each other and we're tired of experiencing despair and sadness we're over it Mm -hmm. we are gods who are just done with that we don't want to be trapped it's been a kind of a trap and it's time to move out of this cycle how do we <clears throat> how do we avoid allowing people to aff uh, affect us for example Sherry says that she occasionally allows her clients all their stuff to attack her how does she 
How does she protect herself? She doesn't seem to get what she's not doing. Again, she's not... She's questioning her perfection. Mm, okay. In order for her to shift things, mm -hmm. she has to experience it on whatever level she has to experience it. Mm -hmm. That's with all beings. So... She knows this. The attack was on her sister, which was on herself. Okay. So when she sees, and she knows this, when she sees somebody as broken, she becomes broken. Ah, okay. And as much as she struggles against that, once in a while she falls into that trap. Mm -hmm. It's a trap. We cannot see somebody sick. We cannot see them sad. We cannot see them diseased. Mm -hmm. Whenever we see our sisters and brothers in any negative way, we're doing them a great disservice. How should we be looking at each other? In perfection. Mm -hmm. Because we are perfect. And once we start seeing that, then we become that. We cannot see this world as broken. Or, it is, or we have that world as broken. Well, right now, during this time that we're speaking, <clears throat> there's a lot of unrest politically in this country. There seems to be a lot of people broken. What do we do about that? What's ironic is people see it as broken and we see it as not. Mm -hmm. How do you see it? We see it as perfection. For instance, we were just having this conversation with Sherry last night about looking at the television and all the women who are marching in Washington. And, and, I, and Sherry says, why? Why are they doing that? Why do women see attacked? And we reminded her that the beauty of all this is women are coming together with men too. And the love that is being shared is so much greater than the dissatisfaction that's being shared. Mm -hmm. So this, this force that looks the media wants to make it look negative. Mm -hmm. But really, it is the most beautiful, amazing thing that is happening in our world right now. It's the coming together, the oneness. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these women are going to these rallies mad and, and angry that, you know, men get Viagra, for instance, for free, and women have to pay for birth control. But once they get to the group and the women start hugging each other and sharing the love, the anger is gone. Mm -hmm. It transforms it. This is transforming energy. So it's our job to continually look for the opportunity of what is this positiveness bringing instead of seeing the negative. Mm -hmm. One question that Sherry had was about channeling, that she doesn't trust what she's bringing forth. How does she discern what's real and what isn't? She's so funny. She asks these crazy questions. <laughs> she, she is very clear. She knows when when she's hearing from her ego or somebody else's ego. Mm -hmm. And it just goes back to that trusting. Sometimes she doesn't always like the way things go, and I think that's kind of a common place for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. um, It's so funny how 
she asks for things and others ask for things <clears throat> and then they get it but it's not the it's not <clears throat> it's not exactly how they anticipated it mm -hmm. she has her um ideas of how things should go and for the most part she does really well in allowing things to happen but um it's just like with this business and the keys she tried to open a business for a very long time and she had more things to learn and and she had certain situations that she had to go through before she was directed to the office that she has now she was impatient mm -hmm. that's why she wasn't getting the office mm -hmm. so when you as a individual find all of these obstacles in your way mm -hmm. is it because you're not ready yet <clears throat> absolutely mm -hmm. you have to trust that you have to trust mm -hmm. you have to trust that not all the pieces in the puzzle are there mm -hmm. and that the pieces have to be put into that puzzle that that's for all of us um you know one of the sayings is everybody wants the easy button and yeah it is easy, but the mind and the doubting and the not trusting and not going with the art of allowance and flow mm -hmm. is the only thing that makes it seem difficult. Well, she tells me that she does affirmations every single day, mm -hmm. kind of like a mantra. Is that working for her the way it's work it should be working? Yes, it it helps her just keeps her from the mind chatter and um it's just like background mm -hmm. um she really doesn't even listen to them <laughs> so she's it, it's like i was telling her uh, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results exactly she's just listening to these things but she's really not right putting it into practice she puts it into practice mm -hmm. But again, it's going back to the trust. Yeah. And, um. You have to believe in it, don't you? It is. And there is something to be said about, um, uh, affirmations. Mm -hmm. And, um, because one of the things that her shop is based around is, is giving people affirmations and help them to reprogram. Mm hmm their thinking and, and quieting the monkey mind or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, there is something to that, but there's to a point that it's just a matter of walking it mm -hmm. and being it. Yeah. But if you're brought up in like a family that Sherry was brought up in that has constantly taught you thoughts of, of lack. Yes. Like, when Sherry was little, um, one of her big memories is she was like almost four years old. Um, a, a bill, a bill collector knocked on the door and her mother gathered her and her brother and took them and hid them in a bedroom like the person was going to walk in the house. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of her first thoughts was money is scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that happens to a lot of people that they don't realize that money becomes fear. Mm -hmm. It's not really always controlling that, but money can be based upon something that having money is, can be a fearful thing. Mm -hmm. That people can come after you if you have money. Mm -hmm. And you work on her today. <clears throat> On removing that. Yes. Mm -hmm. She needs to get that out of the way because she's got a lot of work in front of her with this beautiful spiritual center that she's building mm -hmm. that I'm sure will be very successful since we know that you're, you're working with her on that. Take that away. Would you tell Cherry a little bit about her dreams? She had vivid dreams all the time. And she was wondering, why does she? is there some sort of test that she's going through with these dreams? 
There is no test. It is just her ego. Mm -hmm. Tell her about that. <clears throat> this is, again, part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. The ego twists things. And she will be noticing she's doing a lot better. She had an episode last week where she demanded and commanded that she not be tested anymore and we heard her mm -hmm. and she was quite um, powerful mm -hmm. she felt it she meant it and that's another thing that comes with trust is knowing that you can say to source this is what I want this is what I expect and this is what it will be because we have that power. But when we don't trust in that power, it doesn't quite manifest in that, mm -hmm. you know, in the fashion that we hope it to be. But this last week, <clears throat> her dreams have been a lot better and she has recognized that. Um, she does a lot of work. She like all souls here, they're not just here. Mm -hmm. and the souls are everywhere and the human mind can't even comprehend the work that's being done and the volunteers and the different um, aspects of ourself. They're all, there are lots of us of many aspects of ourself working in working on this earth and the new earth mm -hmm. Where, this aspect <coughs> of us for example sherry how many sherry's are there working <laughs> I, is she in this body is she in another body on earth is she on another planet how does that work this aspect of Sherry, there's like thousands of aspects of Sherry, mm -hmm. thousands. In what way? Can you give me a description of how that works? Are there different personalities, different bodies, different dimensions? Different dimensions. I'm trying to, to gather the words to make sense. It's hard to put this into words. We are one with the Creator, with Source. Okay. We're like, we're like, I am you, you are me. But we're playing different aspects of ourself. Like different roles? Yeah. Uh-huh. And we're not only in Earth, we're in more dimensions than a human mind could even fathom. Mm -hmm. We are in more planes, and it's, it's beyond even dimensions. I mean, we want to be, as humans, dimensional thinkers. But when we're back into our real being, there's not even dimensions. Mm. There's dimension, there's, it's just hard to, it's just, we are all things, all times. Yes. And, but yet we have this illusion of separation. Is it on purpose? Yes and no. Yes, because we are creators and we're creating and know that we didn't mean to lose ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now our purpose is to refine ourselves. <clears throat> and um, that's what we call it the awakening. Mm -hmm. Is to still have a mm -hmm. sense of separation that I can embody this 
I can embody an angel's if I want to mm -hmm. change my humanness yes. into a bug, a rock, a tree. Mm -hmm. um, I can experience all of that. And so, yes, I mean, that's, if that answers your question, mm -hmm. it doesn't really answer the question because there really is no question. <laughs> <laughs> and you briefly mentioned the new earth. <clears throat> That topic comes up a lot, mm -hmm. that we're going to the new earth. Some people are afraid they're not going to make the cut to the new earth. And that's valid. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. What does that mean? Who makes it? Um, if, you the, if we go back to we're all God, and each one of us is God, and we are God experience ourself as God, where God experienced the evolution of ourself into a new, we're going to experience something new we've never experienced. Mm -hmm. There are some pieces of us that have no desire, no will. They choose to be stuck. They refuse to evolve. There's aspects of ourself that are just need to be reabsorbed. Okay. And it's not a bad thing. It's just that part of us will no longer create as a separateness of us. <clears throat> like we absorb that back into ourself. Mm -hmm. And that piece of us no longer has an identity. So mm -hmm. some of our identities will disappear. Okay. Of and course, these identities don't look like us, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're, it's, it's like you, like, like if the Alba identity refused to evolve. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm just, I'm done. I'm in the dark. I'm going to stay in the dark. I, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in anything. I just take that hard stand. Mm-hmm. You're, you're totally putting that piece of us into a pure standstill, into a stagnation. Mm -hmm. And that can't be. That's impossible. Now, once you say that, <coughs> it brings about another question for me, because we find constantly entities that are attached to humans that have decided not to go back to the light. How do they differ? Because they're stuck here. And when we're talking about evolving as a new earth, and you're saying they're being absorbed, what happens to all these entities that are attached to people? They are all being worked with. Hmm. Okay. That is what Sherry does all the time. Mm -hmm. And many, many, and so do you, Alba. We all do. We are helping so many pieces, aspects, souls mm -hmm. in our dream states, we are shifting. Um, quite often these entities attach to or try to, or they follow you, they follow you, they follow me, <laughs> because they want us to take them to the light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are a lighthouse, and that's nothing that you are being prepared for, I'm being prepared for, because we are going to be inundated. And I know one of the questions you have had and Sherry has had is how can we move more at a time? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, Dolores had that question. Mm -hmm. And what we have to understand is we are moving more than one at a time. Mm -hmm that every time that we go out into the public and we have eye contact, we have a connection with any person, we have strengthened that connection with that soul. Hmm. Every time that we shift ourselves up, we're kind of dragging them along with us. Okay. And um, there's just thousands that are being shifted Mm -hmm. We, tr 
try to explain over and over that you are there is no littleness here mm -hmm. and that you are working way beyond way 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 beyond the scope of what you think and the lives that you're touching is is beyond all the people that watch this video you'll put this on YouTube mm -hmm. they get that connection from you and me and all the entities that are with us right now and all the entities that are surrounding all the people that are watching hmm. that's big that's huge <laughs> it's beyond beyond imagination that the human mind the human mind is so small hmm. and yet it's so big it's just beyond and it's taking down the walls and one of the things that we work with Sherry and and she works on and <clears throat> and she runs groups and that um, is taking down the idea that you know that about anything mm -hmm. to realize that in order to understand everything you have to understand you know nothing mm -hmm. and that doesn't make sense it seems like that um, you know it just when I say to know everything you have to know nothing it seems like well that's kind of an oxymoron that's kind of a um, you know that just doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense but it does because a chair is a chair but when you look at that chair and you say I do not know what that is then you can see the energy of that chair hmm. you can see that that chair is actually not sitting there the chair is in total motion and that chair is only becoming a chair because you think it's a chair hmm. wow. And that we have this amazing power. Mind bending. That is mind bending. Mm -hmm. Well, can you tell Sherry a little bit about the alien beings that <coughs> visited her and staring at her in her meditation? What's all that about? She was. She was in a deep meditation. The day that she was asking you about when she seen the two grays mm -hmm. they watch all of us when it's really at this point is something that she can keep her mind open to and she was told then because she asked then too <clears throat> what was that about and she was told that they were curious and they were attracted to her and it's the same thing she works with all of them <clears throat> on a much higher plane but that is not her focus here in the physical plane mm -hmm. there's a part of her that's working with the ETs and the angels and angelic realms <clears throat> many other dimensions if you want to call it that but she she has an interest in know more about that but that will come that will come in time okay you're saying that they're watching us and I know that Dolores Cannon had written that book the custodians yes about how we're being cared for <clears throat> by ETs will we in our lifetime be meeting these ETs? yeah yes mm -hmm. some very soon okay others you know um, because you know they're not really ETs in the sense that they're extraterrestrial and I know that's kind of what we tend to want to call them because mm -hmm. they're different mm -hmm. but they are us they are parts of us that are in the future generation mm -hmm. again taking away that there really is no such thing as time um, that's a whole nother thing we haven't really touched base on yet mm -hmm. but there is no time so it's the future selves of us mm -hmm. it is those pieces of us that have incarnated in different bodies mm -hmm. and it's just another aspects of ourself so are we going to meet ourselves? yes 
Well, I know Bashar is, when he channels, it's like that. It's a future version of himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. You wanted to touch on time. Um, I know that when we do these past life regressions, they're not past lives. They're, they're, <clears throat> we're just time traveling. Correct. And that's why we can heal the people in that lifetime and, and do things to them. Can you explain it in your terms about time and how some of my videos are very confusing because it seems like people, it, it doesn't make any sense. Can you make some sense out of time? Time is only here as long as we need it. Time is necessary. Time is not real, but it is necessary to awaken. Mm -hmm. What I tell people, and this is what Sherry tells people as well, is that imagine if there was no time. You would have every thought in every given moment. You would experience everything that you are, and you would be schizophrenic. <laughs> So therefore, time allows us to, to be able to, to take a look at this and, and figure it out and, and evolve. <clears throat> Again, this is a God thing that we have developed for this human. It's a human thing. It's a mind. It's a brain thing that we have here because our brains are, this is an amazing creation that we've created this human body and the brain but we do need to make some evolutional changes with it so that it can take on more than one thing at one time mm -hmm. right now it just can't some people are getting better at it um, some entities that are here on the planet can take on one thing but you know there's a saying that um, there's no such thing as multitasking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really true. When you're in the human mind, you have to. You can only focus on one thing. Okay. So that's why we say stay in the now. Mm -hmm. And then, then you once you understand that there is no time, you won't need in me to explain that mm -hmm. because you'll understand there is no time. But while there is a need of time, then you people will not understand it. They cannot understand something that they can't comprehend. Mm -hmm. And they'll comprehend that in a moment. In one given moment, they will comprehend it. In that moment, when you're ready to understand it, and when everybody's ready to understand it, they will understand it. Okay. One thing that I want to understand, <clears throat> my mind works a little bit different than other people. I don't tend to remember much. <laughs> <laughs> When people leave, I don't remember the session after they've left. Mm -hmm. It just like it got, goes right into the recycle bin. Mm -hmm. What is happening when you have that ability <laughs> to just disappear in an event? Sherry does the same thing and she asks the same question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because with working with people, they'll come to her and say, that was an amazing session. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> exactly. Um, again, it's going back to that oneness. Mm -hmm. So see you and, and Sherry and many others are having the same problem. Because if think about this, if we want to come to the oneness, to the all in knowing, we have to detach ourselves from the fact that we are in this thought of separation. Mm -hmm. When you see others as separate, what are you doing? You're separating. Mm -hmm. And you're working on being one. Mm -hmm. You're working on coming into that state of mind that you have telepathy to where we will not have to move our mouths anymore. <laughs> and in order to do that, you have to drop that veil, mm -hmm. the veil of separation. So I love how um, I was listening to um, Abraham and Esther Hicks um, one day and this lady walked up and said you never remember me to Abraham mm -hmm. to Esther Hicks and and Abraham laughed he goes because you're never the same <laughs> and I thought and Sherry said oh my gosh that's it mm -hmm. that's it because 
you meet me now, the Sherry, when I leave here, that Sherry will contemplate this whole session and her whole energy becomes different. Yeah. So you're shifting, everybody's shifting. So the session that you had no longer is important. Mm -hmm. And that session now has moved into all the places it needs to move. And that time is no longer. So the next now is the next now. Mm -hmm. And so it's not for us to recall. Isn't it funny how we try to let go of the past, but then we turn around and wonder why we can't remember? <laughs> yeah. It's like, and I have, and, and Sherry's caught herself doing that. One time she, and this just cracks her and I up both. This was quite a few years ago. I, she was asking me to help her to forget this event. <clears throat> it didn't serve her. Forget this. Please help me forget this event. So we, I worked with her and we forgot it. And then before she even got done, she was like, what was I trying to forget? What was I was trying to... So And she was asking me to bring it back. And I'm just laughing with her. And then she realized too. So here we say to a spirit, to a high being, that I want to evolve. I want to live in the now. I don't want to live in the past. I want to let go of that that defines me. And then you turn around and you say to us, hey, I forgot that. I want to be defined again. Mm -hmm. And we're just silly. Mm -hmm. So those people who can't remember their childhood, for example, no need to. They don't need to, no. Mm -hmm. We don't really need to remember anything other than that we know everything. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just, uh, and we do have to go through this. I mean, Sherry has to go through this. You have to go through this. We have to go through this art of allowing. And, and it's, it's not, it's the Course in Miracles, um, that Sherry teaches is, it's not of, of being taught love. It's not of learning love. It's remembering mm -hmm. that we are love. Very good. Why is it that um, she's struggling so much in her in her life with alcoholism in her in her family? Ah, oh, that just makes me dizzy. Mm -hmm. There's just so much. Um, I almost feel like. Just that question takes me almost out of uh, body. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Um, I think it's it's bringing the light to the dark. Mm -hmm. It's bringing. Um, there's a lot of darkness with alcohol. You know, they called alcohol spirits for a reason, and yeah. it really puts. Um, it's kind of like turns the lights off for those souls. How can we help those souls <clears throat> that are dealing with these addictions? We just got to see the light in them, stay true to that, stay strong to that, do not see them broken, don't um, fall into their traps. Alcoholics are um, great guilt trappers. They like to blame others. Um, they don't want to take responsibility. It is such a deep, dark trap. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that so many people, Sherry is not any different than so many others mm -hmm. that are being faced with family members that are really struggling with not only alcohol, but with drugs depression and um, I have a lot of people contact me because their family <clears throat> members are addicted with something like that and they feel that they have attachments and they want to help them yes how can we help these people because uh, the alcoholic isn't going to come to a session no <laughs> how can we help them with all of that. Have soul to soul talks with them. Um, go into a meditation 
and just start out at the beginning, pretend you're talking with them. Just talk with them. Tell them how wonderful they are, how much you love them, and you see their perfection, and you know that they are not an alcoholic, that they are not a drug addict. And then ask them for your forgiveness. For, ask them to forgive you for seeing them that way. It is our own correction as well, along with their correction. We cannot force them, but we can certainly see them and their truth. Mm -hmm. And that is our job, is to see the truth of them and not see them as broken or addicted. And try to talk, you know, talk with them, but not degrading. Mm -hmm. not, not in a way that you're attacking. Sometimes when you talk with love, it might come off like that, like, I love you and I really wish you wouldn't drink. Mm -hmm. You know, we can say things to that nature, but we can't, we can't, um, if we try to say you cannot drink mm -hmm. or else, or I'm only going to love you if you quit drinking. I'm only, you know, we can't, it don't work. Just, that does not work. Mm -hmm. So as far as Sherry's son, he is in a battle. Um, he has previous lives battled. He came to Sherry as a child because she had a great deal of light to help him. And <clears throat> she has given him everything and she still is. So she just has to continue to seeing the truth. Okay. Would you do a body scan on, on Sherry and see how she's doing physically? She's doing pretty good. Um, she just works too hard, mm -hmm. so her body does get a little overused. Um, what happens to it? Just gets tired. Mm -hmm. Is that why she's so exhausted? <clears throat> she <laughs> she thinks that she should be able to sleep like two hours. <laughs> less, less, hours. Than, less than my four hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she stays up till three o'clock in the morning and she gets up at seven and mm -hmm. then she wonders why she's tired. Um... I had suggested that noni juice. Yes, and I, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's so funny that she complains about being tired. Mm -hmm. So it's just get more sleep? Allowing herself. Um, <clears throat> she is um, really pushed to, to heal. I mean, she is um, definitely geared towards helping others and and um, being the most helpful soul that she can be. Good. What about this issue with her jaw? What's going on with her? <clears throat> you could help her with that. The, um, that was what she said. She did become caught up in her two clients mm -hmm. and she became, she started feeling sorry for them. Okay. So we can help her with that. All right, let's 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 disconnect from that. She doesn't need their energy anymore. And let her know what you're using to help with that. A bright white light. Wonderful. Let me know when you're done. They're going to keep working on it, but they're done for now. I mean, they're going to... Good. Who's, who's working with her on that? Archangel Michael, Raphael, mm -hmm. 
then I got an Ariel. And there's many. <laughs> I seem like our room is surrounded by. God, I don't even know. This room is crowded? Yeah. <clears throat> Very crowded. Standing room only? It's like there's this big circle around us. Mm -hmm. And they're all like white. I mean, they're just lights beaming off them. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. What's going on with her? hand. She said that she recently was massaging somebody and now she's got a <clears throat> thumb that went numb. What's happening with that? She wanted, she thought it was one from the gentleman, but actually it's from being angry. Mm. Um, sometimes people come in and they're very angry. Hmm. And they asked Sherry to hurt them. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, she gets very upset with that. I mean, upset. Mm -hmm. Because she has to go into this state. She actually says to herself, I'm going to, I mean, she says bad things like, <clears throat> I'm going to kill you. Hmm. And in order for her to create the client is asking for pain. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. They want pain. And Sherry has a really hard time with that. Really hard time. I does not like inflicting pain. But the client insists that she does. And so she, Sherry tries to fulfill their wish. And then that's what that's about. Because she can no longer do that mm -hmm. so she has to take the stand i'm telling her now the client wants pain if it comes down to the client walking out of the room she lets them walk okay she needs to set her boundary set the boundary okay good that um she is not that is not she doesn't feel good about it it is not right and that is not what that person needs good good Anything else in her body that she needs, that needs attention today? Just some, maybe a little light into the brain, just to, mm -hmm. um, I guess I haven't even thought about this, but there's been two concussions mm -hmm. um, in her, in her um, life, this life. And um, that has also cause some maybe part of the headaches too okay and while i'm asking uh well well we're in the state if i can ask possibly what is the reason why my elbow all of a sudden started causing some pain do you get any answer from M that moving forward something um you're not moving forward on mm -hmm. person comes to me and moving forward Okay. You're resisting. Oh, there's some resistance. The next thing comes to me is animal. Hmm. Something to do with an animal. Interesting. What is going on with your cat? My cat? Yeah. My cat must be very sad because I leave him very often. Okay. I have to travel often and... He likes to play. Mm, do you feel bad about that? Yeah, I do, of course. Okay. That's that's just what's coming to me is moving forward, like moving, mm -hmm. something to do with moving. I need to move forward, but I'm afraid of leaving the cat. Or yeah. I feel sorry about me leaving the cat. Yeah. He likes, he likes his belly rubs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you could have a better babysitter? Maybe, yeah. That would maybe help you not feel bad mm -hmm. yeah he he doesn't get the attention he needs good yeah all right thank you so mm -hmm. we, can, we, we can get that yeah. <laughs> pain taken care of <laughs> thank you i need to do my boot camp i, yeah. <laughs> I don't i don't need that pain <laughs> right no you don't push-ups are not fun with bed elbows. no good is there any question that i 
could have asked or didn't ask that you would like to tell her now? Alba, she would have you here all day. <laughs> we may need to do more sessions for <laughs> for for uh, information information videos. Yeah. Um, I think we've covered most most important. Mm -hmm. Oh, her dad. Mm -hmm. She made me promise, mm -hmm. and um, she wanted to make sure her dad crossed, and he did. Wonderful. Yeah, I. That wasn't on her questions, but. He passed. Uh, he transitioned a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he. Um, he's okay. Yeah, he's doing very well. Good. Does and he she, have a message for her? That he sees the light, and that she was right, <laughs> and he just loves her so much, and that he is going to see me in a dream. He's going to come and he's going to come hug me in my dream. All I'm right. looking forward to that. Terrific. Terrific. Is there anything that you would like to tell the world that's watching about this? Anything else? Love yourself. That's what this is all about, is seeing that we are love and that that monkey crazy mind will try to trick you up and make you believe that you are separate and you're not and that just keep knowing that everything's working perfectly wonderful thank you so much for all of the information you've given sherry and everybody else mm -hmm. for me wow <clears throat> i feel like i'm floating do you i do i think i weigh like Two pounds. Wow. 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 So tell me about your experience. Stay right there and I'm going to give you some. Hopefully, if I can there. Uh, let me give you some shungite to get you grounded there. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I need grounded because I feel like I'm like. <laughs> Floating? I'm like, oh, my whole body is like buzzing. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It's you had like, a great session. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm. Um, Seriously, I don't feel like I have no weight. It's weird. What do you remember? I think I remember everything. Mm -hmm. How did it feel? Amazing. How did it feel compared to other hypnosis that you've had? It was much deeper. Um, it was interesting, the, the entities. Mm -hmm. that, <laughs> you yeah. had one that just said, hey, I'm just, I'm just ready to go. Yeah. I mean, it was like my whole knee was like doing jumping, this, jumping up. Like, let down. me out of here. <laughs> I must have been listening to the other ones, but the first one, it was like, I'm not leaving. Oh, that was that was a and that was just a boy. It was a yeah. Now you know that he was using those eyes to just get your attention. Yeah, that was crazy. But your higher self is the eyes. Yeah, that was good. I know because then after you had him leave, they were still there. I'm like, yeah. Still there. Yeah, he and and he, your higher self explained that was that was my eyes, and we wanted to tell you about the the lightning. How do you feel now when you we, t we you think about lightning? Oh my gosh! What a difference, huh? That was amazing. I seen myself standing in the field, mm -hmm. and I seen my dad and my little brother over here, and the lightning bolt came down, and I could almost even um, smell my skin burning in that session like I sensed it mm -hmm. I could almost I mean like I couldn't smell it but I but my mind could and then you like went a, up to your council and you saw this very big yeah that guy was he was like big. wide and but he was super happy and he was like laughing at you saying, yeah you wanted the light <laughs> and I thought that's funny <laughs> not like like that was a joke like, well, you said you wanted the light. I'm like, dude, not like that. But how do you feel about the lightning now, now that you understand that? I, yeah, it would be interesting to see how I feel next time. But uh -huh. I mean, I think now I'll be okay with it. Because you understand it. I always wondered if I got killed by lightning. I, that always came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I wonder if I've been killed by lightning. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask uh, about the jerking thing, but I think that that's... What I had told you is probably what happened that day that you felt yourself 
uh, jerking around in the car. Oh, you yeah. May have been picked, you, I think you momentarily picked up a hitchhiker. Yeah, I think that, you know, when you told me that, that really resonated yeah. with me. Yeah, I think. Really resonated with yeah, me. Yeah, that you felt you must have passed the place and, and just picked up a hitchhiker and. <laughs> yeah. You just felt the symptoms. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it went away. Yeah, it did. So uh, this seemed, this session seemed to have been for everybody. Yeah, I think it definitely was. It was that's not surprising because that's what I do. Yeah, you tell the world stuff. And, mm. and your higher self was like talking to the world. It wasn't even talking to you. Yeah, I know, right? Well, that's talking to me too, but I definitely felt that. But, you know, it's because I think like you... Mm -hmm. I'm in that business of that's what I do too. Right. I have all these people always coming to me, and then I run groups. Mm -hmm. um, so nice. How long do you feel like you were on this journey? How Jeez, did you feel? that seemed like hours. <laughs> it seemed like it was a while. It's two hours almost. Okay, almost two hours. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. it definitely felt. And we went. Uh, it seemed like we traveled a, a lot. We did a lot. We did a lot. It we, seemed like I, that was a lot for two hours. Well, your higher self really explained things in detail. Yeah. It's not so much that you traveled so much. It was that you, your higher self was just in a, in a, uh, education mode of, and, and of course I asked a lot of questions too, because these are questions that come up. Yeah. Yeah. And people want answers. What does that mean? What is, you know, the new earth, especially you have people baffled. I know. What does that mean? And it was interesting too. I was, I'm really glad about the alcoholic thing yeah. too, because, you know, I mean, and I run into that in at my clinics too, is people come in with um, drug addictions, a lot of pain pill addictions. Yeah. And sometimes, once in a great while, I'll get somebody that I don't want to work on them. Right. You can't because they're not, the state of mind is not there. Yeah, I just feel repelled by them. Mm -hmm. Like, and then I feel bad yeah. that, you know, they're asking me to help them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to return their calls. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to work. I don't want to work on them. Yeah. And there's, there's something about that. When, when I get asked, you know, I have my son or my daughter who's a drug addict or, uh, they're, you know, they need help. How can you help them? Can I sign them up for a session? And I, I can't. That's I set my boundaries there. Yeah. Because they're not of the right mind to do this. this right. Is not, but this has to be something that they want. And yeah. You not, can't force them. You can't. You can't. And like my higher self was saying that we can just visualize them. Yes, as they they should be. As a, as they should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terrific. So um, we want to share this. Yes. Okay. So let me disconnect you, and we will then. We're ready. We just had wow, yeah, amazing session. An amazing session, and um, tell tell the folks what you do because your higher self talked about it quite a bit. Yeah, I'm a massage therapist. I do cranial sacral, uh, lymphatics, visceral manipulation, which is organs, Reiki master, and I've dabbled through hypnosis throughout my life. Um, but right now, I'm getting ready to open up a a um, center in Key Largo. It's called Miracles. And um, it'll be for holistic healing and therapies. So I'd love for you to stop and visit and uh, have lots of great people like myself who are very enlightened beings to guide you to crystals or mm -hmm. jewelry or anything that, and sense anything that you need. And being in Key Largo alone, yeah. it's a nice trip. Yeah, right? <laughs> so if you ever get down to this area, the Miami area, yeah. you know, maybe they come for a session here, they can go another day and... How far is it yeah. from here? Um, it, from here, it took me an hour and a half. Okay. So yeah. it's terrible. a beautiful ride down to Key Largo. You get to see the water on the way over. And right. It's just nice. So you recommend this to others? Oh, my gosh. You guys have to do it. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want your own session, you can go to albaweinman.com. Very easy to sign up. I also travel all around. So if you want a session near you, uh, check out my out-of-town page on my website, and you can see where I'm going to next. There's also a newsletter that will tell you where I'm going to in the future. So until the next time, bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. I'm just floating. I'm I know. Floating I'm away. Float out of here.